welcome back! We are, of course, back in the mines, given that that uh, burrowing worm has decided to move around. We need to pull in the Amethyst Drake. We need to get this thing to turn up and hopefully protect us from whatever this burrowing worm is up to. <laughs> First job today is I really want to fix this absolute mess of a beacon that I've got down here. Make this something pretty. But first, we shall go talk to Horatio and see if he has any wisdom. Also, I got all of my nether wart. I got like a full double, as you know, I got a chest's worth. I don't think I got a double chest's worth. And now I've just got mushrooms growing here. I don't know why. I don't know why specifically they've started to grow in this one patch. I don't know if that's because there was the uh, the soul sand here, but okay, cool. Little little mushroom patch. But just down here is where Horatio has been sitting and waiting by the water, waiting for wisdom. Anything? Hey. Any news? Anything new to be seen in the waters? Since you apparently have some kind of scrying ability. You'd like a bit more time. Okay, okay, I'll go fix that beacon. You just give me a yell when you want me. You're doing great, sweetie. How oh, is it night again? I literally left the mines like 30 seconds ago. How has it been night since I've been underground? Ugh. That tunnel must be a time warp. We'll actually just quickly drop in, see how the new villagers are getting on. There's still quite a few round here. He's precariously up on the walls. Good for him. They're still together. They're always together. This guy has been there for days. I think he might be stuck, but you know, I'm just gonna leave him. I'm not sure what he's stuck on. I think he can move, it's just that he's trying to pathfind to something so he won't go backwards. Anyway, that seems about right. I don't think anybody's moved back in to this top bit of the village. This got abandoned because everybody moved down to the lower bit of the village. I think because they're moving towards the bell that's on the uh, the watchtower, so they're seeing it as a, a village square. So I think this top part of the town has been abandoned in favour of the lower parts. So I might need to put a bell up here just to get other villagers to stay. Yeah, I don't think anybody's up here. Hi. Have you forgiven me? I accidentally whacked you with an axe. No, you're still a bit angry. I'm sorry. Aha, you have claimed one of the cauldrons. Good for you. Of course. Hi, dude. Where are you going? Go on, get on the lily pads and then you can get out. Can you get on a lily pad? Yes, you can. Good lad. Anyway, they all seem fine. I'll go fix that beacon. So, I'm back down here in my hideous little beacon room. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to figure out what I'm doing with the water, because this is annoying me so much. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to make a few, a few areas to branch mine out of, because this will be nice for going down for diamonds and things. Yeah, I'm going to decorate it with more geode stuff. I've got geode stuff. Just some more decorative rocks, including some dripstone, always some dripstone, and then I've got some decorative stuff here. And I have got some axolotls, we'll put some axolotls down here. We've got Oka Biscuit and Chucky Bicky. I don't know why I called them that, but I did. So they're going to get a lovely little pond down here, all full of moss and glow lichen and very lovely. I think I'll time lapse it because it's going to be quite quick, I think, probably like a half an hour job most. we are. It's a bit strange. It's just a load of little pockets. My usual kind of cave stuff. Dripstone area here and then at the, uh, the four points from the beacon itself. We've got some paths leading off. This one opened up into a cave and all the way down here, if we just run a little bit, just a little bit, it goes into the deep dark. Now I don't know if there's actually a settlement around here or if it's just the just the mush. I don't mind this because I actually would like to farm some of it, so I'll explore that at some point. And a lot of these, as I've been digging, very much have opened out into more iron veins. Yeah, see there's there's loads of iron. I think it's the one by the dripstone, I think it's this one. Yeah, so there's iron and there's actually an iron block in there as well. So we're going to get lots of iron down here, which is good because I need it. I need lots of iron. Now I would like to do something with the beacon itself, I don't know what. I mean, one I could do to move it because it's not exactly central. I could do to maybe move it one block this way and maybe one block here so the beacon's on this one. Either this one or this one, I can't decide. It's just slightly off centre and that's really bugging me. And this is presently my way in and out. It's a wonky water path that just... It's the same water path that was always there, but now it has to kick in a couple of blocks. And it's, it's a bit clumsy and it means I can't drop in anymore, but it does save me in a ton of rockets. So I can drop down if I want to, but I'll probably die. 
I can dare it, but I'm not very good at landing. Or I can just swim up. It's a bit slow, but I don't have a, a very big gunpowder farm yet, so I can't really rely on rockets forever. I do have to be somewhat careful with them. I'm also hungry. Hungry. I have not yet released my axolotls, so which one are you? Your ochre biscuit. Come on. Be free, ochre biscuit. Hello. And you are Chucky Picket, who is a baby. I've brought some tropical fish so we can have some have some more once he grows up. Because Chucky Bicket is very baby. I do need to put an axolotl farm, well, an axolotl pond somewhere in the settlement because it's so cute watching them swim around. I need to do something with the frogs as well. If I'm going to make a frog-like farm soon, I need to actually start getting the frogs. I need to find somewhere that's got as close as possible to all the needed biome temperatures to get the three different frogs. Oh, hello. Ochre Biscuit doing some sick flips. Move this over one. Yidoki. That's better. I don't think it can be central anyway, because I think it's e even numbers, but uh, that feels a bit better. Okay, I think that is that. I'll go check on her ratio. Actually, I need to put a diamond in that, don't I? Not a diamond, an emerald. There we go. I'm just going to do a very quick repair on some of my tools, because they're just running a bit low. You don't have pumpkins, do you? That'll do. Anything new? Any new thoughts? Okay. Alright, yes, thank you for clarifying. Okay. So you think that we should put amethysts around the beacon to give it power so that the beam is sending out like an amethysty beam? Okay. I'll be honest with you, that doesn't make a great deal of sense to me, but we'll give it a shot. It can't hurt to try. Thank you for your efforts, you're a very good boy. Okay, we'll give that a try. We'll go decorate the beacon properly. See if we can give it some kind of amethyst flavour and see if that'll help pull the amethyst drake in. I'm realising as I'm setting the beacon up here that it isn't actually going to be central, is it? I was talking before about lining it up with the middle of the um, the middle of the gatehouse at the front, but it probably actually isn't going to be the middle. I don't think it's far off, but oh uh, well. I think provided it's not too close to the centre, it won't really matter. Did that just load in? Okay. Yeah, if it's like one or two blocks off, that'll be annoying. But if, it, if it's a lot, if it's like 10 or 20 blocks off, then it feels okay. feels like it's meant to be like that. Whee! Ah, good old zombie walls. I also realised I didn't drop this down, did I? I said I was going to drop it down a couple of blocks, and I didn't. So I've got to take the whole thing out. And this one can stay here. I'll go get some more um, wither stars. I might be cheeky and take a couple of blocks out from underneath it before I take the beacon down, so I've still got the effect in place. I won't bother time lapse in this, it's uh, quite basic, I'm just dropping it. Ooh, diamonds! Found quite a few diamonds doing all of this. You know what, let's go down three. Okay, there we are. Now I take the beacon down. Ooh, Chucky Bicket's grown up. I could do with another brown, I think Chucky Bicket is my only brown. Come hither. Do you not eat? I thought you ate tropical fish. What is it that you eat? Oh, the tropical fish need to be live. Okie dokie. I will have to go looking for some of those. I actually find them all over the place around here because they're um, they're in caves all the time. There's so many mossy caves around here. Oh, back down they go. And once again, it's a good job I have a near infinite supply of emeralds now, isn't it? Yeah, that's a bit better than having just a great big beacon set in the middle of the room. Okay, now I need to decorate it. One, messy up the edges. Just a little bit. Yep, that feels a bit better. That's a little square here still, isn't it? Yeah, if I have it blend into this one a bit, there's already a geode here. Then I usually do the outer ring first. Have it overlap the beacon a bit. Don't want it to be perfectly square around it. Okay, it's a little thick in places. I might take this corner up and then calcite. Have a little bit of height on some of the calcite. And then the amethyst. You know what, I'm going to hide the green entirely. We don't need to see it. I don't have many of the crystals left, but we can add a bit of texture. Well, I don't have many on me. I do have some in my various storehouses. Of course, we have to have one of these. I have one of these pretty much everywhere. Which do I prefer? I think purple looks closer to the amethyst, but it's also quite strong. 
I don't know if I like that, I'll be honest. Anyway, we'll use the glass to add some more texture. That will do, I think. I brought a couple of spare lanterns. I'll just pop around. Aye, there will do. It could maybe do with some foliage on it, since everywhere else in here is so green. It could maybe do with something, but I'll have to come back with that. I want to add more water, because this, sort of doing this, is really annoying me. Whereas if I put some holes in, hopefully I can make it look a little bit more... Like I meant for it to look like this, and not that I had to botch a corner. Which I did. I had to botch it. Yeah, that, that kind of makes more sense. It's a bit of a sticky patch here for coming in and out of this tunnel, but I'm not going to do that that often. So I don't really care. Definitely want some this side though. Yeah, I think that's it. That's the beacon covered up and we've got some uh, nice decoration in here and we've got some water to help kind of tie it together and not look quite so weird. It, it's still a bit weird, but you know, eh. And we'll have to see if this beacon does anything at all. This can't be good. Is this the burrowing worm? Or is this because of the beacon? Okay, I think it stopped. What happened there? Look at all the stuff that's fallen. I think something's come out the walls. Have a look. I can't see. It's way too steep. I suppose we'd better go have a proper look and see what's actually going on here. Let's swim up. Should be able to see. Yeah, let's go to this middle platform. Oh. That's a geode. And that's another geode. Okay, it, it, there appear to be some new geodes. Why have they appeared? What is happening? Well, nothing seems to have changed up here. But that is definitely more amethysts than we started with. Interesting. When Horatio said to uh, decorate the beacon, I thought he just meant, you know, to make it pretty. To make it purple. No, apparently it's done something. Something rather magical. Let's go chat with him. Let's go see what's up. Right then, mister. What did you say? Yes, it worked. I didn't realise that's what it was going to do. Now there's three, maybe four new geodes in that drop down into the mines. Is that what you meant? Okay, so is it going to make more? It is. So we can give beacons powers. Okay, that's interesting to know. You've, you've seen something else? What else have you seen in the waters? Something's coming. Is it friendly? You think so. Okay, good to know. Soon? That's a little less good to know. We need lights. What, to light this place up? To attract the dragons. Okie dokie. I suppose it would help to attract some attention, wouldn't it? Okay, so do I need to do the frog light farm? Is that what you're saying? Okay, I'll get on that, I suppose. If I'm going to be making a frog farm, then I've got to go find somewhere that's got three different temperatures close together, which would be fun. If I was just playing for fun, I would absolutely try and do this manually because I enjoy that kind of flying around looking for something. But because I have an episode to make, I do not have like three hours to spare looking for a mixture of biomes. Because you need a cold biome, a middle biome, and a warm biome. And all the warm biomes are that way. There's a massive spread of them. And then there's nothing else. Everything is just either moderate or cool. There's no mixed in warm biomes anywhere around here. It's all like 3000 blocks that way. So I'm just going to have to go and use chunk base and figure out somewhere that looks promising and go check it out. And then I'm absolutely going to go there via the nether roof. I'm not flying 4,000 odd miles. Miles? Blocks. May as well be miles to see if it's even the right place. I'll take some stuff with me as well. I don't need amethyst stuff. That can go. Thankfully, I have actually gathered quite a bit of slime, so I'm going to take most of it with me. I don't imagine I'm going to need that many frogs. I think I want maybe two to four of each colour. Somewhere back here, I have already got some tadpoles. So I'm thinking, find somewhere, put a platform down, put some walls up so the frogs can't get out, put some water down, collect. Pretty much it. I've already got some leads, but I'll take some more and I can keep them there. Take a spare bed and I can set a bed up there. Anything else? Can you think of anything? Okay, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. Flint and steel. I think I've got one in my ender chest, but I'll take another one just in case. Now I think that's everything. I had a quick look on chunk base, and there seems to be one which is a snowy peak into a stony peak alongside a jungle. So that should give me all three in close proximity, whether or not I'll be able to do it as one building, I don't know, but it should be close. It is at positive 
1550 and negative 4452. So I'm going to go to the coordinates in the nether because that's going to save me a lot of time. So, if my calculations are correct, I want 193 ish, which way? That way, by minus 556. 193, a bit more, a bit less, minus 556. This should be about right. Let's see where we end up. Hello. It's an Optifine glitch. Apparently. I said that with such confidence as if I actually knew. I don't. Of course I don't. Are you anywhere helpful? Crouch in case there's something here. Terrific, I'm in a cave. Ah, the cave's not too far away from stuff though. Ah, that's good. I do apologise, because I think this might be a jungle. So we might be getting some very odd frame rates and stuff going on. Just gonna light this up and say I'm underground. I'll go up and then I'll put some water down. Oh, there's a zombie. Hello zombie. That's not a brilliant place for a portal for teleporting things there. Although actually I can just use water to get up and down, can't I? So I can just throw the frogs around when I need to. Oh, hello. Be gone. Well, here's some snow. And also some jungle, by the looks of things. I'm just going to set a bed down here for now. That's quite a cute little circle, but that, isn't it? Have a look around. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Look at this. So this is Frozen Peaks, which is the cold one. This is Stony Peaks, which is the middle temperature one, the moderate one. Then how far? And then we're into jungle. That is so good. Spawned literally right underneath it. Ooh, and a thing to blunder. That is so handy. And where's the cave? Just that. Oh, that is so good. I think I've been so lucky with that. Because when you see it on chunk base, it is very hard to tell what it is and how useful it might be. I'm gonna get some stuff while I'm here. I might get all that coal. You know, I like to get the coal. So this spot here is where I want to be. We smack. And I think I'm literally just going to make a platform that goes into this, so into the, the the frozen peaks, and then out a little bit towards the jungle. Yeah, let's just do this then. Stony peaks, frozen peaks. Okay, so a little bit out this way to get some jungle. I'm going to double layer it so I can put water down. And there we are, I'm into jungle. It is not going to be pretty, but I don't live here, so it's fine. Jungle. Ooh, it's stony peaks this side. It doesn't really matter too much, it just depends where you put the water and where you put the tadpoles. So it's not the end of the world if they are a bit um, a bit mixed up. You just move the tadpoles around. Actually, it's going to make some kind of platform outside the structure. Torch on the... Whoops. I meant to torch the tree, not strip that one random bit of it, but never mind. Um, I'm actually going to need a bit of wood. If only there was some around here gonna get some spruce that's gonna be way easier to deal with than trying to take down some jungle trees. I want a door so I can get in and out of the sealed structure. I don't really need to break it up on the inside because like I say I'll be moving them manually with a bucket and it's not like I'm doing hundreds I'm just doing a couple and then having somewhere I can come back to replace them if I need to. I'm gonna do three tall. I'm gonna treat these frogs to a bit of headroom and there we are. That's my uppy downy route. That'll that'll do I suppose. Infinite water source. Then I'm literally just gonna Cross the floor a little bit. Probably going to need some torches so the water doesn't freeze. Because they take about 20 minutes to grow up. We'll get these guys going. While we wait for the baby froggies to grow up, I'm going to go plunder some more of these mountainsides, I think, because there's lots of coal and iron here. But I'm also going to go check out that, see if there's anything interesting in it. Probably not. Yeah, I'll take the gold. I do also, at some point, need to set up a small iron farm build that I'm going to be doing today. Again, another Shulker Craft one. I'm at the Frog Light Farm. It needs so many like hoppers and rails and things, and it's just absolutely chugs through your iron. You need two iron golems as well, so it's a very easy design by the looks of things. It's just very iron heavy. So at some point, I am going to need to set up a little iron farm. It's a good job I always keep multiple beds about my person. Oh, a little village. I might go check that out as well, but then I might be too far away from the frogs. So I'll maybe do it afterwards, because the sooner I can get them grown up, the sooner I can start getting more. I'm just going to sit here, just in case I'm going too far out. Two froggies. And another ocelot. You guys. 
Thank you. This is going to take so long, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to do some editing and I'll just keep popping back in on these guys and hopefully we should get a lot of frogs soon. Well, that will do for now. As you can see, I've got lots of the orange and the greens. Unfortunately, only actually this water block and this one here are producing the jungle. The rest, unfortunately, is actually stone hills, which I didn't realise. And some of the jungle ones, when they hatch, they uh, they clip out into the jungle. So we can maybe get those back with leads. But yeah, we have at least got, I think, four of each colour as a minimum. So this is more than enough, and I've got plenty here to restock if I accidentally somehow destroy my frog farm. Or destroy my... Uh, Frog white farm, I should say. Now, I'm going to go home, test that this portal actually works. I'm going to go home and see if I can uh, find somewhere to put the main farm. Yep, that's brought me back onto the nether roof. Now, which way is home? Here we are. Yeah, it's not that far. Somewhere around here, we should have basalt delta, which is what I need for the farm. Ah, oh, here we are. Oh, that is literally, I think, just there. Yeah, okay, that's really handy. I'll go and get the stuff to build that with them. I think this is everything I need. As I mentioned before, this design is by Shulkercraft. I will once again leave a description. I won't at all. I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, yeah, I think it's pretty easy to do. Probably only going to take about an hour or so. So I'll just get on with it. It's all done. It took literally 30 minutes to put together. It was a very easy one. And uh, I've been AFK for about 10 minutes. And we've got frog lights. Like this, this is probably the most frog lights I'll ever need in the entirety of this playthrough. That's just in like 10 minutes. Ridiculous. Also, magma cream. Very handy. When I went to get the frogs, I got four of each colour. As I brought them all through, I had three of each colour, and then once I got here, I had two of each colour. So I don't know where the other half was gone. I mean, this is doing fine, this is still generating a lot of the uh, the frog lights, but I have no idea where the other frogs went. I have looked for them. They are lost and gone forever on the nether roof. Unless somehow some of them managed to get through my main portal, but we'll find out when we go home. But no, that's that. It's, it's now working. I think I'll leave the scaffolding there so I know where the middle platform is. I'll uh, come back here at some point and just AFK for uh, maybe an hour, and that'll probably do everything I need it to do. Just out of curiosity, let's gather everything up. So we've got five stacks of each, got six stacks of the, the pearlescent and the verdant, and then a little bit extra on each one in ten minutes. So, cool. That should, that should see me forever. Before I go home, I'm actually just going to go back to the frog farm. I'm going to get some tadpoles before they all hatch. And I'm going to make a little frog pond back at the base. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> okay. Ten tadpoles. Time to go home. Put the tadpoles somewhere safe. Come back for these later. And then empty out the shulkers. So where to put the frog lights? Because I'm going to need somewhere specific. I might for now put the overflow in here behind the wool farm. This is mostly full of bamboo because the bamboo farm is already full. So I think once I've filled these as well, I'll probably just call it done for bamboo because that's going to be like 20 double chests full of bamboo. So I think that'll be fine. I think for now I'll fill these up. And I think now I know what Horatio means about getting lights. We'll look at the original book about the monsters. The beasts also prefer silence and to go unnoticed, so can be deterred with guards and dogs. So I have a feeling, if we light this place up, and we have stuff on the hillsides, and we maybe get some more defences on the walls, maybe some watchtowers, the dragon won't be so keen to come over here. I don't think it's back in its cave, I think it's still missing. 
Yes, it is. Probably somewhere in the mines still. But if we can get some kind of lighting around and about, that might help keep it at bay. And I think that's what Horatio meant when he said that we need to get lights. I mean, he can't help being a little cryptic. He is a dog. As you have requested, I have made the frog light farm. Yes? Any more plans for now? No? Okay. Well, you just keep thinking. Let me know if anything comes to you. I'm going to go build a frog pond. So back here, deep in all my little farms, by my pumpkin farm and my uh, sugarcane farm, and there's the bamboo back there, there was a cactus farm, but it absolutely built the chests and it was backing up the hoppers. So I have since emptied it. I don't think I'm ever going to need more cactus than this. So I think here is actually where I'm going to put the frog pond. I'll put a bit of glass over it, maybe, so they can sit in here, they can hop around, we can make it pretty, and that should be that. Froggies. I have, for now, left the hoppers and the chests and stuff down there, just in case I ever want to use this room for anything again. That's um, like a little auto-harvesting farm. Just covered it up with moss so it's easy to get back to, but yeah, there we are, some little froggies. They can hang out here and be very cute. It's a shame they're the orange ones, because I think I prefer the greens. Although orange stands out quite nicely in the grass, really, doesn't it? Ooh, that's a noise. I don't like how damp they are. I think the green at the moment is actually my favourite, then maybe the yellow. The purple's okay. Oh, they do have a grain. Okay, have to be mindful of that. But with this done, we should be able to start lighting up the village next week. Especially the mines and the actual settlement bit over there where all the villages are. That's an important bit we need to protect. We can come up with some interesting designs, hopefully. At the moment, I've just got lanterns as if they're street lights, but it would be nice to come up with something that's a bit different. And then I can maybe do something different across every settlement. I actually think the purple one would look really nice in a desert. I don't know why. I just feel like that with the sand colour would be really nice. Anyway, I need to think about this settlement first. So we need to come up with some plans. Maybe build some more watchtowers or some walls or something. We'll see. They're very nice in foliage, aren't they? They lose their colour a little bit in the foliage. You still can kind of tell what colour they are. We'll find something to do with them. But I think I will call it here for today's episode. You guys having fun in there? So once again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll join me again next week. Bye for now!